Uh, today I want to talk about compound machines, the actual and theoretical mechanical advantage. Here's an example. Let two simple levers, uh, G and H, be uh, of type K and L respectively. Except that the output of G, the point B, is actually going to be slid over so that it is the input force uh, at point A for lever H, thus forming a compound lever. Take the time now to sketch this. Pause this video and sketch this right now. Okay, here's my sketch where you see the output force of G at coming out of point B of G is actually going to be the input force for H at point A of H. So this creates the compound lever where the input to it is the input force at G and the output for it is the output force at H. So here's a first uh, uh, type of problem here. There will be four of this. Uh, neglecting friction, what downward force at A here, uh, since it's uh, frictionless, we're going to put a star on it. So what downward, downward force at A of lever G will lift a 2,000 pound load at point B of lever H? So over here, FOH will equal 2,000 pounds. Uh, provided that the distances AB and PB for each of the levers are six foot and one foot respectively. So that's our first problem here. The second problem is what is the theoretical mechanical advantage of the G lever and of the H lever individually and then what is the, me the theoretical mechanical advantage of the two levers combined? Part C what is the ratio of the displacements of B, point B at H, moving up with respect to point A of G moving down? In other words, what's the train ratio of G sub T? And then the fourth and final uh, part of the question is a D. What friction, uh, I'm sorry, with friction, consider each lever individually is 95% efficient. So the eta of G of, of lever G and the eta of lever H is 95% efficient. What actual downward force at A, so that is the FIG, will deliver the 2,000 pound force at point B of H? And we still have the same 6 foot and 1 foot for the distances AB and PB for each lever. Okay. Don't be, over, be overwhelmed with the details. Um, out of those four questions, I quickly see that the overall output force is given, and I also see that the lever dimensions are given. Uh, my strategy is to try to come up with an overall mechanical advantage in terms of the mechanical advantages of the individual levers. I'm going to throw some tools at this. Generically, I have that the output force is equal to the Mechan the actual mechanical advantage times the actual input force. It's a generic relationship. And then I also know that the output force is equal to the theoretical mechanical advantage times the lossless input force. And I know that because I could uh, think of substituting the actual mechanical advantage equals the efficiency times the theoretical mechanical advantage. I could uh, substitute that into this equation. And then I could also substitute where I have the lossless input force is equal to the efficiency times the actual input force. I could substitute that, um, solve for the actual input force, and substitute that as well into this. And I would get this uh, nice result here. So I'll be using I and double I. And of course, I also use that the train value is equal to the inverse of the theoretical mechanical advantage. So I use this in my toolbox here, moving forward. All right, so let's do this. Let's take um, let's take the the equation that we've already shown, where you have the input force of the H lever is equal to the output force of the G lever. So we have that. 
but let's take a look focusing initially on the fur on the H lever. So the input force of the H lever times the mechanical the actual mechanical advantage of the H lever is going to equal the output force on the H lever. So that's the H lever equation. And in using one here, I can make a substitution and get uh, the relationship uh, shown here where I have the output force of the G. I know that the output force of the G is also uh, equal to the mechanical advantage of the G lever times the input of the G lever. So I'm kind of getting to where I need to be. Um, I need what I really need to, do, to get is this relationship that says that the output force at the H is related to the input force at the G lever. And that second uh, equation two here is, is, is giving me this uh, overall actual mechanical advantages of M sub T, which from the previous equation is the product of the individual mechanical advantages. Then I can take each individual mechanical advantage and then break that into the efficiency times the uh, theoretical mechanical advantage. So I do that for each, and then I regroup the efficiencies in to create a total efficiency. And then I use the theoretical mechanical advantages to create a total theoretical mechanical advantage. And that's so that's e equation three, where I group them together, and then equation four gives me what my total efficiency is. And then equation five gives me my uh, total theoretical mechanical advantage. So I use equation two, three, four, and five in what follows. Okay, so taking a look at um, the, the trying to de derive the theoretical mechanical advantage of each of the individual levers, first thing I can look at is uh, some similar triangle stuff. So I have the, the input value D of a lever and then I have that as a ratio uh, over length here AP for the input side and I set that equal to the um, by similar triangle the equal to the output distance capital D divided by the output uh, lever arm which is BP so I set those equal and basically I can get uh, the the train value straight away here is the output distance divided by the input distance and I see that that's the ratio of the lever lengths BP over AP. And then this gives me my theoretical mechanical advantage, the one over the train value, giving me the AP over BP. And I know that for each of the levers, the BP or the PB is equal to one foot. However, the AP differs for the two uh, levers. And the first lever, since I know AB is six foot, uh, the first lever has a b has the pivot in the middle, so the I have to take the a b minus the b p in order to get the a p for the first lever. So the a p for the first lever is actually five feet. And then I have to look at okay, I've got a b here. These are not to scale, obviously. So the a b is the six feet, and then I have to go back and add the one foot in order to get the pivot to distance the distance to pivot for the input the a p sub for the H as a seven foot. So then for each lever individually, I have, I do the AP over BP, and for the G, uh, that gives me a me theoretical mechanical advantage of five, and then for the H, that gives me a theoretical mechanical advantage of seven, and then <clears throat> using equation five, I, I, I do the product and I get 35 for the overall uh, theoretical mechanical advantage. So these three taken together answer the part B of the question, getting the theoretical mechanical advantages. Okay, um, so from the, the second equation coupled with the two generic equations I had applying it to T, I get the relationship that the output at H, the output force at H is equal to the theoretical uh, mechanical advantage for the compound lever times the lossless input force at G. And um, that's one of the things I need to solve for is this lossless input force at G. And I already know this from the previous step. So I basically uh, solve this equation for FIG star 
and was uh, 2,000 pounds divided by the theoretical total mechanical advantage of 35. So that gives me a 51.7 or 57.1, beg your pardon, uh, pound force. And that answers uh, part A, which uh, the part A was uh, neglecting friction. What downward force at A of lever G will give us the 2,000 pound lift? Okay. And then um, from the answer of B, and then also using uh, the generic uh, III for T, I get that the ratio of outputs, that would be the output distance going up of point B of H versus the input distance at, at point A of G going down, uh, that's going to be 1 over 35, so that answers part C. And then the last part, we want to bring in that we have 95% efficiency. And we also want to draw upon the equation 4, which combines the efficiencies of the individuals to get the total efficiency of 0 0.9025. And then using 3, equation 3 was how we get the actual total mechanical advantage as a product of our total efficiency times our total theoretical mechanical advantage, we end up with 31.6 as the actual mechanical advantage for the compound lever. And then uh, from our equation 2, we can go ahead and solve for the actual input force that would be necessary to lift that 2,000 pounds. It's going to be the output force that's desired, the 2,000 pound force, divided by the actual mechanical advantage of 31.6, which gives us a 63.6. Three pound force. So this answer is D, and that's how you solve this compound lever. Let's do another example. Here we have a barrel. It is rolled up an incline, 20 foot along its length, and six foot in vertical height by means of a rope that is fastened to the top of the incline, feeds along the incline, then feeds under around and over the barrel and returns to the top parallel to the incline and above it. Sketch this first. Take the time to try to sketch this and, and digest this and, and pick it apart and uh, make sure you have the 20 foot going in the right direction. So here's the result. It's a compound machine. We have the rope wrapped around the barrel and the rope tied back at the top of the incline. Call the pulley G the rope and the barrel. So the output force of G will actually be the input force to the incline. That is 20 foot along the incline, along its length, and six foot high. Call the incline H and call the pulley G. Picking the, these apart, you have the input force to the rope being pulled here and the output force actually being of the movable pulley, the output force at G. The output force at G is going to be the input force to the incline at H. And then the output force at H is actually going to be the barrel weight. So that brings about the first part of this question where neglecting friction to roll a barrel that weighs 500 pounds, so our FOH is going to be 500 pounds, what force must a man pull on on the return rope? So that would be your FIG. But we're dealing without friction, so we put a star on that. So the first thing we want to find is FIG star. Secondly, what is the theoretical mechanical advantage obtained by the man who pulls on the return rope to roll the heavy barrel up the incline? So what we're asking for here is the total theoretical mechanical advantage. Part C. 
What is the ratio of displacements of the barrel rolling up? So that would be how high it advances up at H, incline H, with respect to the displacement of the rope being pulled. So how far the rope displaces. So that's the train ratio, G sub T. With friction, consider the rope is 95% efficient and that the incline is 90% efficient. What actual force must a man pull with at FIG? So that would be FIG on the return rope to roll the barrel up the incline where the barrel weighs 500 pounds. So that's part D. So let's do it. So we have that the output force of the pulley system is equal to the input force of the incline at H. The output force at G is equal to the input force at H. And then the remaining uh, equations here in development is completely the same as we had for the compound lever. Basically we're taking the output of one simple machine and we're using that as the input to a second simple machine. And then we're looking at the composite mechanical advantage, theoretical as well as actual. So theoretical mechanical advantage for the pulley at G is going to be two because that's the theoretical mechanical advantage of this type of movable pulley. The theoretical mechanical advantage for the incline at H is going to be 1 divided by the sine of this angle. So that's going to be 6, which is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is 20. So that's why we get 20 over 6. So here we're going to reuse equation 5 where we get the total theoretical mechanical advantage as the product of the two and we get 20 over 3 and that's the answer for part B. Okay, so from 2 again we're going to take the output force at H, we're going to look at the product of the theoretical mechanical advantage as well as the lossless input force. Solving for the lossless input force, since we know these two, uh, gives us 3 over 20 times 500 pound force or 75 pounds. So that's the answer to A. What would the lot without friction, what would be the force the man would pull on on the rope to lift the 500 pounds? And as far as the ratio of output distance rising up of the barrel versus how far the person's pulling on the rope, that distance is going to be 1 divided by the total mechan theoretical mechan mechanical advantage, which is going to be 3 over 20. And that answers part C. Okay, so with the efficiencies 95% for G and 90% for H, Combining that with our equation 4, we get a composite total efficiency of 0.855, just the product of the two. Then from our toolbox, we can actually do a little tweak here and get that the actual force to pull on the rope would be equal to the lossless force divided by the efficiency. And we could get 87.7 uh, in this way pound force and that answers D. And that's how you solve this compound machine where you have the pulley and incline plane combination. So in summary, for compound machines created from serial connection of simple machines, the output force of one of the machines is the input force of the next machine. So because of that, we get that the total composite mechanical advantage is the product of the mechanical advantages of the individual simple machines. And the total composite efficiency is likewise the product of the efficiencies of the individual simple machines. So this is good to help us design these types of machines. 
And that concludes our discussion for the day.